Hello everyone, for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's a fun show where we dive deeper into robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here at team number 226, Hammerheads out of Troy, Michigan. Uh, 226 goes all the way back to 1999. That's even before my time in first. Uh, but if you haven't been paying attention uh, to this team the last few years, you have been missing out. Uh, they are the skills competition winner uh, from the Potassium Group for Infinite Recharge at Home. Uh, and at the time of this recording, also won District Chairman's Award in FIM. In 2020, uh, they won the St. Joseph FIM District event, where they took home the Engineering Inspiration Award, and also received the 2020 First in Michigan District Championship Chairman's Award. Uh, and what an incredible team this has been. We're going to be looking at their modified 2020 robot, talking about uh, some of the changes that's been made, what we're going through in here. And to help me out with that, I have Raga, Sonnet, and Varun, and like I said, diving, uh, diving deep into the programming aspects of it, the design processes, the mechanical aspects, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Raga, we're going to start out with you here talking about some of the different mechanical aspects uh, of the robot uh, and what's been on this 2020 modified robot. And then we're going to be bringing in Sana at the same time too to talk about some of the changes that have been made from the 2020 year as well too. So uh, start me out uh, on this robot here. Uh, why don't we start out uh, with the intake of this robot, uh, kind of going all the way into the shooter, that power cell journey we talked about. And uh, then we'll be talking about uh, climber as well too. Uh, so let's start out with the uh, in intake on the spot. Yeah. So this is our intake from our 2020 robot. So we have rollers on it in two different levels, and we also have mechanum wheels. And these mechanum wheels allow us to intake power cells from corners. So even when we're not intaking straight into the robot, if a power cell is um, diagonal to the robot, we can intake in that as well. And as the power cell is being intaked, we have an active floor system here in the robot. So we have a horizontal component and a vertical component on the active floor. And the horizontal component feeds the power cells into the vertical component a bit slower so that the active floor does not jam. And as it's fed into the vertical component, it comes up to our shooter here. And our shooter has two different positions. So it's powered by these pistons, which um, help keep the shooter in place when we're shooting the power cells to make sure that the power cells go into go accurately and we're able to score with more precision. And we have pa pancake pistons at the back of the shooter to make sure that the shooter is held in place. All right, so we had a lot to unpack here uh, on this as we go through. So can we start out uh, with, with the intake uh, in particular? Do you mind uh, uh, either having you or Sonnet dive a bit more into, uh, you know, the motors that you're using on it, um, any changes that were potentially made uh, year over year, and then we'll kind of just take that subsystem by subsystem at a time? Yeah, I can talk about the intake. So on our intake, we have 1775 Pro on a one to five uh, gear ratio, excuse me, with pulleys. And uh, so some of the changes that we had to make during the 2020 season to get the intake into the stage that it's in right now, um, one of the biggest changes that we had to do was we added these polycarbonate guides to our, our vectored intake wheels. Um, what this does is it slightly changes ge the geometry that the power cells have um, as they go through the intake, and this ensures that they get moved into the center of the robot. Some of the other changes that we've had to make is add these polycarbonate plates to the center of the intake to ensure that the two shafts uh, maintain a constant center to center distance to ensure that the belts that connect them together don't skip. Um, as well, for our 2021 challenges, we had to add this polycarbonate plate back here to ensure that the power cells don't roll out when we're accelerating for the power port challenge. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the uh, design process on your uh, indexer itself too, because you mentioned, especially the horizontal aspect you mentioned, um, with the way those power cells are kind of zigzagging 
uh, in into there. Can you can you show us a little bit? Is, is that like a, a spindexer, or is it actually kind of follow a specific path as it goes through? Um, if we were to just follow one power cell as it goes along, through gravity, it gets fed down into this section over here. And there's a set of belts and uh, compliant wheels that move it along this way. And back there, then we have our vertical component that lifts it up to the shooter. So the ball usually gets fed in like that. And then after that, uh, the intake pushes it with a lot of force into the active floor that we have here. And once the active floor starts spinning, uh, the active floor can spin really fast and push everything up all the way to this vertical uh, feeder system that we have here that eventually passes it to the flywheel where it gets shot out. Well, let's go into uh, the, the transfer mechanism. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the, the vertical transfer that you have into the shooter. Uh, can we get a little bit more specific on what specifically is being done with the mechanisms in there? Yeah, uh, definitely. So up here, what we have, um, over here, we have a bunch of belts, as you can see. What happens is the, uh, the little guided floor down here pushes everything here, and we see here that there's a lot of vertical belts that eventually move and um, push everything up to the flywheels that we have over here uh and i guess with the vertical transfer system uh we had to do a couple of design modifications uh throughout the entire time we had to change out some of the belts and play around a little bit with the pulleys to figure out what method would push it up the fastest and most effectively and this is sort of what we settled with yeah i, I was going to ask like you know from a jamming issue perspective anytime you're changing directions like that you run that issue of things jamming um did you have to uh, make some modifications specifically for that as well had a bunch of rollers positioned for the vertical component, but um, that ended up causing a lot of friction. So um, we opted to use belts instead, and that helped the active the um, power cells move a lot faster to, through the active floor. And to ensure that we don't have any jamming issues, the two components of our active floor aren't actually mechanically linked together. So through software, we ensure that the horizontal component of our active floor is slower than our vertical component. So that way that balls don't jam at the transition zone between those two. Yeah, that, that's a great thing to add in, Barine. I appreciate appreciate you saying that as well too. Um, so as we go into the uh, shooter uh, of the bot on here too, um, a couple things just to ask on the shooter in particular as we take a look at that uh, would be uh, from an improvement perspective, uh, has there been anything from the fine tuning you've done uh, you know, for infinite recharge at home uh, to say, hey, you know, like this has changed from the actual infinite recharge uh, game? Uh, and then the was your multiple stages of your hood, was that an add-on from 2020 as well? The multiple stages of the hood we actually kept on um, really early on. And actually early on in 2020, uh, like Raga mentioned earlier, we had to add on the pancake system uh, to sort of hold everything in place when the ball is pushing against uh, this at a really high speed. But specifically for infinite recharge at home just this past year, something that we did that was a pretty big design modification was actually uh, with the flywheels right here. Originally, we had a, a quite a different setup. We had uh, two sort of uh, rollers uh, with safety wire wrapped around them, but it didn't really end up uh, working as well as we uh, we hoped. So what we ended up doing was changing those out for these wheels and adding the flywheels here, sort of help uh, really propel the ball forward. Do you know how much those flywheels weigh by chance? They're one and a half pounds. So one and a half pounds each yeah. or, or total on them? One and a half pounds. Yeah. Sure. So we used, yeah, we used to have uh, fair lane wheels um, and they were wrapped around with safety wire. But as we saw in competition during 2020, um, lots of the inspectors didn't really like having safety wire on our shooters. So come 2021, we changed them over to normal Versa wheels. Uh, so kind of a, a programming question on this. So as you're looking at shooting, we'll see the robot shoot in just a moment uh, as well too. Uh, how do you uh, determine like uh, that your your shooter is at the correct speed that you need? Like what, do you, do you do that just in software? Is it just guessing or what kind of process do you go uh, for doing that? So there's multiple things that go into ensure that our shooter is spinning at the proper speed. The first and foremost thing that we use is our limelight. And with our limelight, because of the fact that it's slightly angled upwards, um, based on where the target or the uh, power port is in its field of view, we can figure out the approximate distance the robot is from the power port. And with that, we have a lookup table that kind of tells the shooter as to how fast it should be spinning for that. And if that fails, we also have robot odometry, which tells the robot where it is on the field. And that's like a backup system to figure out how fast we should be spinning the flywheel. 
Uh, I think that's a good segue uh, talking about odometry and your robot uh, in regards to other programming uh, that might be used. Can you talk a little bit more how you're using odometry? And then one of the things to ask with odometry, you know, we see it very common in FTC robots, but in FRC, one of the issues that I've seen with a lot of robots is that uh, you lose, you know, odometry over a tons of distance kind of loses a little bit of precision to know exactly where you are for things. How have you combated something like that happening to make sure that you're always, you know, getting the correct feedback on where you are on the field? So to, to answer your question about how do we correct for drift over a course of a match, um, during a match, we know that a robot is going to be at certain positions on the field, say that's up against the target zone where it's shooting, or if that's uh, at the feeder station picking up balls, we use that as a reference point and set that um, in code. Uh, the drivers have the opportunity to like overwrite wherever the robot thinks it is with that position that we know for sure. And that way, that kind of minimizes the amount of drift that occurs during a match. And really, in terms of odometry, the biggest use for that is just to help us during Auton to know where the robot is so that we can follow the paths that we have for the robot. And finally, as a backup in case our limelight can't find the target. Yeah, it makes sense on that. Uh, how about anything else from a programming aspect that you want to uh, dive a little bit more into, Barun? Yeah, so we made a lot of changes to our programming um, in terms of autonomous for our 2021 Infinite Recharge. During most competitions, the the types of paths that a robot has to follow is usually just going to specific set points across the field. But this year, uh, we took the time to develop our own autonomous system where we use uh, Quintix splines to draw paths for our swerve drive to follow. And uh, through motion profiling, we generate velocity paths for all of the four sort of modules and the robot will follow those paths to give us really fast times for the infinite recharge challenges. So is there anything else as we start to wrap up here, uh, any other changes uh, from your robot from 2020 into 2021 that you want to talk about? Um, I, I know we, uh, I'm not sure if you want to uh, talk about your climber at all for 2020 or anything like that, but anything else that we might not have covered? Uh, in terms of changes, that's about it for a robot, but we would like to highlight our climber, and we can talk about that as well. Okay, so this is our climber, and it has cascade ringing. So there are four stages to it, and the climber is locked at the bottom here by bearings on an axle, by gears on an axle. Um, so when the robot is trying to have the hook up here, and that hooks onto the um, generator switch, so originally we actually had a much smaller hook that wasn't as wide and we didn't have this around it. So we have this neoprene around it now to make sure that the hook stays on when the robot is climbing onto the generator switch. And we actually made it a lot wider so that it was easier for the robot to hook onto it and for the robot to come off of it. Uh, and then when it, when it hooks on there, um, no, nothing detaches, right? It's all just pulling up the full weight of the robot. Is that correct? Yeah, it all just pulls up. Well, 226 Hammerheads, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your robot. Uh, the modifications have been made. You guys have an incredible machine and, and a team that I really do feel uh, needs to be uh, heard about more, uh, you know, outside of First in Michigan and amongst the first world because you guys have been performing at an extremely high level. So thanks for taking the time to tell us about your robot and good luck in future seasons as well. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.